Right then, peeps, the continuing story of the coolant leak slash water ingress, I suppose this is part two. Before we get started on this, a few people warned me that the heater box was a common source of leaks. And I have to be honest, I didn't really think it would be as bad as it is. We definitely found a leak and it was definitely coming from the heater box. Now there might be something else at play as well, but what was coming in was definitely water. I did the old rain on the car test once I got the carpet out, which I'm going to show you a little clip of now. And as you can see, there was definitely water coming in through the dash vents, down past the heater box and into the car. So what situation are we at? We have got everything out the car. Let me turn the camera in and I'll show you. This is the delight that you're going to have if your heater box is weeping. And that massive gap there surrounded by that orange circle is where the heater box actually bolts up to on the car. You can see the path of a leak that I showed you in a little clip before. Down here on the camera is the rusty spot where there's obviously been water coming in and it's been creating a problem. That's going to have to be cleaned. And that's been trickling down the transmission tunnel from around about here. So let's get in a little bit closer and show you what's going on here. Right, so... This is your heater box enclosure. That shiny thing that you can see around about where we are, around about here, is a fuel pressure regulator on the intake manifold. This set of pipes just around about here are the three coolant hose pipes that go to the heater matrix. You should be able to see how wet this foam is. This is absolutely soaking underneath here. And some of that tastes of coolant. So I believe, look at that, it's disgusting. I believe we've got a twofold problem here. We've got the seal has failed around this edge all the way along here and it's let water come in and I think the o-rings for the coolant pipes here are also old and worn out so we need to order a couple of parts from BMW, a new seal and some new o-rings. Let's just show you the vents that I thought were nice and clear. Not the vents, sorry, the drains. So this thing here that's covered with crap and the other one just down in the corner down here, that's also got a little bit of shit in it, but not too bad, are the drains. So water's coming in, if you look up here, through your bonnet, through your scuttle plate, or down your windscreen and down your scuttle plate, and it ends up trapped in this compartment in here. And that has a very, very small lip on it here. I mean, that is as thick as my finger, maybe, just down in there before the water's going to basically sit on the heater box. And if the heater box seal's no good, then it's going to come straight in. One of the reasons you read about DME compartments getting flooded is because if you look just around the corner here, that plastic cover is where the DME is behind the, uh, behind the screen there. So all the wiring and trunk here goes straight across and in that compartment. If you get a big flood inside this compartment, that's why it goes up into your DME. Conversely, with I said, we've just got the windscreen wiper motor, uh, and I've got an automatic ECU over that side, but that's by the by. I suppose you all want to know how the fuck you get this thing out. Getting it out is actually easier than it looks. I know it looks like a nightmare what you're looking at in here, but your first stage is to remove all of your interior. Take your seats out, get out all your centre console, take out all the little units that comprise the stuff beyond the, the gear shifter. So your heater control unit, uh, your onboard computer, your little cubbyhole pocket, your clock, whatever else you've got in there. Once you've got all that out, you want to undo the brace that goes across the steering column. That's this big brace thing here. That thing sort of sits that way round if you're in a right-hand drive car, and that's what supports the steering column. So pull that bad boy up and out of the way. And then you want to remove your dash. Now, if you've never taken a dash out of an E36 before, it's actually surprisingly easy. There are a couple of bolts on either end of the dash, and then one that holds that brace on. And then you've got three 7mm bolts that go into the dash vents. So you've got to get a little pry bar in and pull up on the dash vent the ones that are right by the windscreen uh, and you need to get a 7mm socket in there. Now, this is a 7mm socket that I use that's shaved down. It's tiny, okay? That is about 10mm long at most uh, and I've actually shaved the head off it so it's nice and flat. Uh, I use that for two things. One, I use it for all the little 7mm bolts that have got really, really shallow heads on them. Uh, and secondly, I use it on a T-bar. So I use a little T-bar with a quarter-inch drive socket thing on it uh, and I can get in just beyond the windscreen and start to undo them. They're a right chew, but they're, they're not really that tight. They're just screws, so they come out fairly easily. Once you've got those three out, you can just pull the dash out of the way, basically, and slide it out. The heater box itself is really only five nuts. 
We've got four nuts that hold on the actual main box, which are in the engine compartment, and then one that hold on the coolant pipe work. So I'm going to skip round now, I'll get a torch and I'll see if I can show you where they are from the perspective that you're going to be removing them. Um, I'll also show you them on the heater box. So the heater box itself has got like four studs on it. Let's get in and show you that. Okay, so this is the back of the box as you would see it from inside the sort of compartment of the car. You can see here there's one stud here, one at the top and then there's two on the other side as well if I just get the camera in there. Also, whilst we're here, I'll just show you this is the old connection for the um, coolant pipe work. These O-rings look to me like they're square cut. Now I don't know if they've always been square cut or if that's just wear on them, but I'm going to replace them I think. I'm not going to muck around. I don't want to be putting this back together and finding out it leaks even more. Um, you can see how wet the whole unit is underneath here. Give it a taste. Yeah, a taste of coolant quite badly. So I think we may have found a tiny coolant weep from these ports and rainwater getting in at the same time. Two different things. Let's get into the engine compartment and show you how you actually get this thing unbolted from the car then. Obviously there's a bunch of plugs and stuff you've got to undo as well, that's by the by. In here, standard procedure for removing anything from behind the scuttle is to undo the little, undo the little scuttle sort of collector panel under your wiring and then you can sort of see in here. At the end of my finger there is one of the holes. There's another one a little bit higher up that you've got to go through the arms of the wiper motor to actually reach. And then round this side, you should be able to see another one just here. And then there's one right up the top there. So I use a long extension bar with a deep 10 millimeter socket and you can get on those four nuts quite easily. And then just stuck in behind here, you'll see this plastic housing here. That is the connector for the coolant pipe work. And right in the middle there is a little hole where you'll find a 10 millimeter nut this little bad boy in here that 10 mil nut sits on a stud just on that bracketry there so you pop him off you pull off your four big flanged 10 millimeter nuts from here and up the top and so on and so forth and your whole box then will be loose pull the thing out of the car and start fixing things so leaving off where we've just shown you it's quite a long time in the future i filmed this stuff that you've just seen about as i stand now about three weeks ago during that time obviously i was trying to dry the carpet out and decide what other work i wanted to do whilst i you know had all the interior at the car and um, the heater box being the main culprit here but there was a little bit of wiring i wanted to do i wanted to get rid of my abs wiring because not my abs sorry my airbag wiring and i just got a little bits and bobs the carpet is now dry which is sweet. There is the wondrous heater box. And it's not without its faults and its problems. We're gonna to come to that in just a minute. What we've got over here is a new gasket, some new O-rings, a, bun a bunch of other new parts actually. We've got a new pollen filter. We've got a new heater matrix. Let's give you a little description of what we've been doing. First and foremost, my main thing that I wanted to do was to change the gasket. This is the original gasket from BMW, which is very, very thin, closed cell foam rubber with an adhesive backing on it. It doesn't start that thin. It starts much, much thicker than that, as you may or may not be able to make out on camera from the thickness of this piece here that doesn't get clamped by the box. So it's only clamped at the bottom, which has squished it all completely flat. They're about 55 quid, 60 quid from BMW. And you know me, guys. I don't want to spend that money for a bit of foam rubber. There's nothing special about it. So I looked for some closed cell foam rubber and I made my own gasket, which is what you're looking at here. Now it's obviously not as tidy as the BMW unit, but it's got an adhesive backing on it. It's a nice tight foam with a decent bit of thickness to it. And I bought a box of 12 sheets of this stuff, which come like this. These are all my off cuts. I've had a couple of goes at this gasket. You get 12 sheets in a packet on eBay, like that. And I guess that that is, I can't remember how long that is, about 50 centimetres by 30, I think. I paid £12 for that, for all 12 sheets. So I thought, well, I can't go wrong if I, I buy myself a bunch of sheets of this gasket stuff. It's basically sound insulation. It's sold as sound insulation. I'll make the gasket out of it, and then I'm going to cut apart some of the foam you've seen on the car already, and I'll replace it with some of this stuff. So we'll leave that in there for now. So that's the gasket. I've also cleaned up on the car, here she is out there, all the lip 
that sort of sits around where the gasket sits. So if you ever do this, guys, and you get the heater box out of the car, the first thing you're going to recognise is, although the drains are in front of it, and they might be clear, there's a very, very shallow channel that runs along the bottom of where the windscreen scuttle would be, like the collector, if you like. It's not very steep, so it wouldn't take a lot of water getting in there for that to want to overflow and then want to introduce itself into the seal. The seal is like the last line of defence, I suppose. So what I've done is I've cleaned up all the crap and the grit that's in that groove, running down to the drains to allow the water to drain in there correctly. And then I read somewhere online a really crafty little tip where a guy had taken some wax, some body wax, and he'd smeared all the inside of the channel with wax to sort of make the water want to run off quicker. So I've done that as well. Um, I'm trying to think of absolutely everything to stop this leak from coming back. Whilst we've got the heater box out, I've chosen to do a bit of work with it. That's why we have an aircon matrix removed, the heater matrix has been removed, the pollen filter has been removed and as you may or may not make out down here we've got one of the flaps which has had a repair done to it that was actually broken before. We also got the box right next to us here, there are two of these flaps, there's one on this side here and there's one on this side here that control the exterior or interior flow of air into the car. What I've actually done is I've re-trimmed with some of that foam these foam pads and I had a breakage here that I've had to fix with a bit of JB Weld. This is actually the little pivot pin here that is going to eventually end up in this arm here. I'm going to stuff that back in in a minute and I'm fairly confident that fix is going to work for that. Getting into this thing is actually a lot easier than it looks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to refit the heater matrix and I'm going to film that. We'll put the pollen filter in and we'll show you the box apart. But I'm going to put it in the tripod so we're not wobbling around. So bear me just a moment guys. Heater matrix box. I've got mine all loose at the moment, but I'll kind of try and hold it together so you can see. So you pull it out of the car, it's sat this way round. All your heater matrix gubbins and your aircon stuff is in here with a cover on it normally. All your vents are at the top and your blower is at the back. And then at the side you've got a whole lot of shit that looks really complicated, but it's just a bunch of servos that operate all the arms and the doors inside of here. To get this apart, you want to flip it on its upside. Right, whilst we're here I'll show you the pollen filter actually goes in there. Right, this would be your aircon matrix and this is your, where your heater matrix sits. This is a drain for any excess water that's going to come out of the uh, the box when you get condensation or in the aircon stuff itself. So this would drain out around about where your gear stick is uh, and then drip down the middle of the car. These are all servos on the side, there's some more on this side, there's a bunch of wiring. These are some temperature sensors for, I believe, for the aircon system to monitor what's going on. And really it's held together in a really simple way. All there are I don't know if I'm going to be able to focus on these, but you'll know these if you've done the heater blower matrix thing. It's just a little metal clip. Around the periphery, you're going to find a bunch of these little clips that hold it together. Apart from that, the only other thing which you've got to worry about is on this side here, you'll notice there are three little motor-driven servos. One of them has got a screw which actually locates in this upper part. So you pull this off, you see all the foams are your usual BMW stuff that's just coming apart, man, you know. So what I'm doing at the moment is I've basically deleted all the aircon stuff out of here and I've got a new heater matrix to go in. Herein lies my first issue and why this video has taken me so long to produce. The heater matrix itself has six connections to the engine bay of the car. The three here go into the matrix and the three there go into the actual car itself. Your heater control valve essentially comes up the back of the bulkhead. This is kind of sitting the wrong way around as you'd see it. And then enters into these three pipes. The heater matrix itself has the three O-rings here that seal it. And then three little bolts that secure this into the car with a little metal plate that you can see just flapping around down here. So she sort of sits like that. Cover over the top. Everybody's happy. The O-rings that are in here... You won't be able to make a certain camera, but if I grab this in my hand, it looks like it's almost completely flat at the sides and certainly flat inside the bore. When I took these out of the car, I have a bunch of like random O-rings sitting in my garage that I would use for all kinds of things. I had some that were close, but didn't quite look like they were going to fit it properly. And seeing as I'm putting a brand new matrix in, I want to make sure that this doesn't leak. You know, my, my whole reason for doing this is to try eliminate any leak from the car. So I've actually gone and I've spent the money and I've bought the O-rings from BMW. Here we have my hideously expensive O-rings from BMW. Now I'll tell you there are two different sizes. There are four smaller ones, these two pipes here and obviously the other side. And then we've got two of the larger ones and you've got to buy the big ones in packs of 10. If you're doing this in the near future, hit me up. I've obviously got a few spare. I only needed two of them and I had to buy 10. 
So I've got eight spares. Anyone wants some, you can have them for the price I paid for them. We're also putting a new pollen filter, as soon as we got the opportunity. Um, I've got the old one next to me here. I did change that not too long ago. It is black, man. That's the, the incoming side there. And this was, you know, pure white when I uh, when I did this. I've maybe only had that in for just over a year, something like that, maybe. Smaller O-rings and the smaller pipes. This should go on nice and easily. It bloody well won't. You know what things are like. Uh, I'm just going to get a little bit more wet on my finger and rub it around where these O-rings are going to go in. Okay, so I'm fairly happy they've gone in beautifully and sealed well. So that's kind of the main gubbins that I wanted to do inside. What now happens is I struggle, <laughs> I struggle to get this top on, I'm sure. Um, you could undo the wiring loom, but this is just going to slot down over this. I'm fairly sure the adhesive is just keep it in position for fitting. Because once it's in the car, it's going to squish up against it so bloody tight. Right, I'm fairly happy with that. That is basically my heater box then back together. All I really am now left to do is to start putting all this stuff back in the car. And that's going to begin a process which is going to take me a little while. And I'm going to start off with a carpet. So I think what we're going to try and do is time lapse some of this so you can see what's happening. Um, but if any of you have ever taken apart your E36 before, you'll have seen all this kind of stuff before. Right guys, another day, another dollar. Being a mechanic in a week and we got a lot of work on in my work right now. Car to build under pressure. Man, I don't have a lot of motivation at the weekends, I will be honest. So this is another weekend. I've got a couple of bits in the car, I'm going to show you that. And then I'm going to time lapse sticking the rest of it in. So come and have a little look. All I've put in so far is the carpet and the heater box. And the heater box, as you saw when I was taking it out, is four screws for the actual box itself in the engine bay. Uh, and the one screw that holds in the pipework or connects the two parts of the pipework together. That's done, the engine bay's basically done, so I can just focus on doing this interior now and getting it all back together, and I'll record it for your viewing pleasure. Right, so there you go, that's a time lapse. I'm going to wrap it up there for the day today because all that's left to go in is the mats and the seats. I can't drive it and test drive it at the moment because it doesn't have an MOT, so I've got to get it MOT'd and I want to do a sniff test on it still. But what I can say with some confidence is, since I put the heater box in, which is a week ago now, it's pissed with rain quite a few times here and it's still bone dry inside that interior. Um, so I don't think the heater box is leaking anymore. I'm fairly confident with that. I won't know about the running of the car because I haven't run it for long enough. I'll need to top cool it up a little bit because it'll be low, but she's alive and she's running. There you go then, guys. Amazing. A new interior, well, interior replaced. So everything seems to be working, apart from the lovely fact that my heater control panel now, if you can see that on camera, is taking a shit. And so is my onboard computer but ho-hum these things are fairly cheap to replace these days so i'll see if i can get a couple of panels and swap them out um, apart from that i'm a happy boy i've got to check the temperature yeah she's doing all right so there you go trials and tribulations of a leaking e36 if you've watched this and you've got any questions in the process stick them down in the comments as always guys if you've got the same problem yourself my heart goes out to you best of luck in the next video we will sniff test the car i've got the kit here to do it now but i'm relatively confident we don't have any problems so let's keep our fingers crossed and let's hope those are not the famous last words as for always thank you very much for watching thanks for following the channel and thanks for sticking with me Let's get into this cold COVID winter and enjoy a bit of Christmas time. That's it for now, guys. Paymo out.